Hi, good morning, students. Welcome to our online class. In previous class, we were discussing about the Indian land resources. In that, uh, we were discussing about the major crops of India. Okay. Indian crops broadly classified into two types. I will give you know, they are first one food crops and uh, second one commercial crops. Okay. In food crops, we have discussed about uh, rice and wheat. Okay, rice is the first important food crop of India and second uh, wheat. Wheat is the second important uh, food crop of India. Okay, rice is the first food crop of India. Rice is the first and very important food crop of India and second wheat is the second important food crop of India. Okay, in India, uh, which Indian state is the highest producer of uh, rice? That is Uttar Pradesh. Okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, in India, which Indian state is the highest producer of rice? That is West Bengal. Okay. West Bengal is the largest producer of rice, and uh, second, Andhra Pradesh. Okay. But uh, uh, which Indian state is the highest producer of uh, wheat? That is uh, uh, Punjab. Okay. Punjab is the highest producer. Sorry, uh, Uttar Pradesh is the largest producer of wheat in India. Yes. In India, uh, yes, West Bengal is the largest producer of rice. Second, Andhra Pradesh. Okay. First, which Indian state is the largest producer of rice? That is West Bengal. Second. Andhra Pradesh. But in case of wheat, uh, this uh, Uttar Pradesh is the largest producer of uh, wheat in India. Okay, Uttar Pradesh is the largest producer of wheat uh, in India, and Punjab is the second second uh, position. Okay, Punjab stands in the second position, but uh, this Uttar Pradesh stands in the first position in the production of uh, wheat. But uh, in the world, China is the largest producer of wheat. Okay, China is the largest producer of wheat. It means China stands in the first position, and India stands in the second position in the production of wheat in the world. And next, uh, we also discussed about commercial crops like uh, sugarcane. Sugarcane is the first uh, important commercial crop of India. Next, uh, we have also discussed about uh, tobacco. Okay. Uh, in the world, uh, India is the second largest producer of sugar cane and sugar. Okay. India is the second largest producer of sugar cane and sugar in the world only after Brazil. It means Brazil is the number one producer of sugar cane and sugar in the world okay but in india which indian state is the largest producer of sugar cane that is uttar pradesh okay uttar pradesh is the largest producer of sugar cane next uh, we have also discussed about tobacco tobacco is also one of the important uh, cash crop or commercial crop of india and also here we can produce DD, cigarette, cigar, charu, hookahs, etc. by tobacco. And uh, it is very little used for chewing, snuff, and uh, insecticides. Okay, these are the uses of tobacco. Next, Andhra, uh, in India, which Indian state is the largest producer of tobacco? That is Andhra Pradesh. Okay. But in the world, India is the third largest producer of tobacco. Okay, India is the third largest producer of tobacco in the world. Largest producer and exporter of tobacco in the world. Up to here, we have discussed. Next about fiber crops.
fiber crops in that first one cotton the cotton is uh, is also one of the commercial crop and in that uh, it is a fiber crops cotton is a fiber crops okay uh, cotton is an important industrial and fiber crop in india already you know cotton is an uh, very important raw material for uh, cottage industries okay so that's why cotton is an important industrial and fiber crop in india it provides raw material for the cotton textile industries in india now only i told you cotton is a uh, very important uh, raw material for cotton textile industries especially uh agro based industries of the no this cotton textile is also one of the agro based industry it means uh, raw material mainly comes from agriculture sector okay so that's why here this cotton is a very important raw material for cotton textile industries cotton is a tropical and subtropical crop okay cotton is a tropical and subtropical crop and it requires normal temperature from 21 degrees celsius to 24 degrees celsius okay and rainfall of 100 to sorry uh, rainfall of 50 to 100 cm annually and which soil is the best suitable for cotton cultivation it's very important uh, black soil is best suitable for the cotton cultivation okay black soil is best suited for the uh, for its uh, growth it is grown as a corn crop already you know cotton is an best example for corn crop corn crop when it starts uh, when uh, uh, sowing takes place here when the rainy season starts on the time corn season also starts okay with the beginning of uh, southwest monsoon season the corn crop season also starts okay normally the southwest monsoon season starts our rainy season starts in the second week of june okay with the beginning of that uh, southwest monsoon season this uh, corn season also begins in india or starts in india okay and uh, here this cotton is an uh, important corn crop it is a best example for corn crop okay Uh, in most of the indian states we can grow this cotton for example gujarat maharashtra andhra pradesh haryana madhya pradesh punjab karnataka tamil nadu are the major producers of uh, cotton in the country okay these indian states are the major producers of cotton in the country okay which are those gujarat maharashtra andhra pradesh Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. Okay. Among these, Gujarat is the largest producer of this cotton. Okay. Uh, India has the largest cotton growing area in the is the third largest producer of raw cotton in the world. In many Indian states, we can grow cotton, especially. Uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, etc. But among these uh, Indian states, Gujarat is the largest producer of cotton, and second Maharashtra. Okay. And but in the world, uh, India is the third largest producer of uh, this cotton. Okay. But India is the number one producer of cotton in the world. This is about cotton. Okay. You any example for fiber crops means you have to write this cotton. Okay, cotton jute. Anyone you write? Okay, cotton and jute are the examples for fiber crops. Next about beverage crops. First, what are the beverage crops? 
the crops which are used to produce the stimulating drinks uh, are called uh, beverage crops it's very important for one mark what are the beverage crops the crops which are used to produce stimulating drinks okay the crops which are uh, used to produce the crops which are used to produce stimulating drinks that crops are called as a beverage crops okay example coffee and tea these are the two examples for beverage crops okay what do you mean by beverage crops or what are the beverage crops the crops which are used to produce stimulating drinks okay the crops which are used to produce stimulating drinks are called beverage crops example coffee and tea are the most important beverage crops of india okay. see first about tea tea is the most important and the cheapest of all the beverage crops india is the second largest producer of tea in the world after china here India is the second largest producer of okay it is a when the tea is the crop so it requires a temperature normal temperature 21 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius and heavy rainfall of Sir, in rich, rich in humus. This soil is the best suitable for its cultivation. Okay, on the slopes of hills or mountains, this tea grows very well. Okay, it uh, grows best in deep and fertile soil, rich in humus. It requires hills, hill slopes. Now, I have to told you it grows uh, in the hill slopes. Okay, it requires hill uh, slopes. With an altitude of 1,200 meters to 2,400 meters above the sea level, tea is mainly grown in Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, and Kerala. Okay, it is a tropical and subtropical crop. It requires normal temperature of 21 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius and annual rainfall of 150. Uh, 50 centimeters to 150 centimeters to 200 centimeters annually. Okay, sorry, uh, 150 centimeters to 250 centimeters annually. And uh, which soil is best suitable for its cultivation? It requires hill slopes. With uh, sorry, it uh, grows best in deep and fertile soil, rich in humus. Okay, and um, especially in the slopes of hills and mountains, it grows with an altitude of 1200 meters to 2400 meters above the sea level. Tea is mainly grown in Assam. In India, Assam is the largest producer of tea. Okay? In India, Assam state is the largest producer of tea. Is it clear? But Karnataka is the largest producer of coffee, especially Mangalore. Okay? In India, Assam is the largest producer of tea, but Karnataka is the largest producer of coffee. Uh, the scientific name of tea plant, Camellia thea. Okay, the scientific name of tea, Camellia thea. The tea contains the thea. Okay. Next about role of horticulture and floriculture. It's very important. Role of horticulture and flowering culture. Before knowing about role of horticulture and flowering culture, first we should know the meaning of horticulture and flowering culture. So first, see about horticulture. The intensive cultivation of fruits, vegetables, flowers, medicinal and uh, aromatic plants is called as a horticulture. Okay. The intensive cultivation of fruits, or generally you can say, the excess production of fruits, vegetables, flowers, 
medicinal and uh, aromatic plant plants is called as a horticulture okay if you want to write uh, how they have given in your textbook a textbook if you want to write like that means you can write otherwise uh, in easy way if you want to write means just you write like this the excessive production of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal plants and uh, aromatic plants is called as a horticulture or if you want to write like that means the intensive cultivation of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and uh, aromatic plants is called as a horticulture so just uh, keep in your mind the excessive production the excessive production or the intensive the intensive cultivation of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and uh, aromatic plants is called as horticulture okay and in the india horticulture provides an uh, intensive for uh, making agriculture more profitable through efficient land use optimum utilization of natural resources and generating skilled employment for the rural masses and there are number of uses are there in this agriculture because it creates number of job opportunities in the local area especially in the field of agriculture okay and uh, it helps to increase farmers profit also okay now only i told you what what do you mean by horticulture the intensive cultivation or the excess production of fruits vegetables flowers uh, and uh, this uh, medicinal plant medicinal and uh, aromatic plants okay the intensive production or the intensive cultivation of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal plants and uh, aromatic plants is called as a horticulture or you can write like this the excess the excessive production of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and aromatic plants is also called as horticulture okay it helps to increase the profit of farmers and it helps to generate the employment opportunities in local area and it helps to and it helps to develop the agriculture sector and also it helps to uh, optimum utilization of land and it enhances exports and the provides uh, nutritional security next bit, india has a wide variety of climate of climate and the soil has a good potential for growing a variety of horticulture horticultural crops now india has emerged as an important producer of horticultural crops okay it is the second the largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world next to china in horticulture india is the second largest producer of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and aromatic plants plants only after china okay in horticulture india is the second largest producer of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and aromatic plants okay but uh, china is the number one or largest producer of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and aromatic plants okay huh. its share in global production of fruits is 11% china's production of fruits is 11% in the world okay and that of vegetables is 7% horticulture is carried on mainly in andhra pradesh but in india uh, which indian state is the largest producer of these fruits vegetables and flowers that is andhra pradesh okay so andhra pradesh stands in the first position in horticulture uh, after andhra pradesh ma haryana madhya pradesh jammu kashmir karnataka tamil nadu kerala maharashtra and uttar pradesh also are largest producers of this products okay next floriculture it is the cultivation of flowers 
for commercial purpose in india is known is known for the art of growing flowers since time immemorial uh, so just uh, you write like this what do you mean by floriculture it is the cultivation of flowers for commercial purpose okay floriculture means production or the cultivation of flowers for commercial purpose it is called as a floriculture okay horticulture means the intensive cultivation of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal plants and aromatic plants but the floriculture means it is the Art of cultivation, art of cultivation of flowers for a commercial commercial purpose. Yes. Floriculture means it is the cultivation of flowers for commercial purpose. It is called as a floriculture. Okay. It is the cultivation of flowers for commercial purpose. It is called as the floriculture. It's very important for one mark. Okay. So just try to keep in your mind. It is the cultivation of flowers for commercial purpose. It is called as a floriculture. Huh. In India is known for the art of growing flowers since time immemorial. It plays a significant role in India. Sorry, in Indian agriculture, it has the potential of generating income and providing employment opportunities for farmers, especially women, and added to export of the country. In the floriculture, especially, it provides a big opportunity for women. Okay, because in that uh, floriculture, number of women workers are working. Okay, uh, India's agro climatic condition are very suitable for the cultivation of uh, variety of flowers. It is known for growing traditional flowers such as uh, jasmine, marigold, rose, crassandra, and uh, aster. Cut flowers includes orchids. gladiolus carnation anthurium and lilies these are the traditional crops of india in that production india is a known for okay india is best known for the cultivation of these uh, flowers okay jasmine marigold rose crassandra and aster cut flowers includes orchids gladiolus carnation anthurium and lilies okay. uh, floriculture is mainly developed in tamil nadu in uh, a which indian state uh, is the largest producer of this flowers that is tamil nadu okay tamil nadu stands in this first position in floriculture but in horticulture andhra pradesh okay next karnataka andhra pradesh Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana, and West Bengal. Okay. So next, the term horticulture is derived from the Latin words "hortus," meaning garden, and "colare," meaning to cultivate. Okay. How the term horticulture is derived? The term horticulture is derived from Latin words "hortus." Okay. The term, the term horticulture is derived from the term 
or turns okay the term particle there is derived from the term orders which means garden and color okay orders meaning garden and color eh? meaning to cultivate okay so so uh, next one the progress of the horticulture field is called as a golden revolution it's very important for one mark what is golden revolution the progress of horticulture field is called as a golden revolution okay the progress of the horticulture field the progress of the horticulture field is called as a golden revolution or you can write like this the excessive production of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and aromatic plants is called as a golden revolution or just in simple way you write the progress of the horticulture field is called as a golden revolution okay the progress of the horticulture field is called as a golden revolution or you write like this the excessive production of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal and aromatic plants is called as a golden revolution okay with this this chapter also completed before concluding today's class i would like to give some questions so write down what are the fiber fiber crops what are the fiber crops you need two examples okay what are the fiber crops you need two examples cotton and jute okay cotton and jute are the examples uh, fiber crops means the crops which provide raw materials for textile industry are called fiber crops okay next what are the beverage crops you need two examples okay the crops which are used to produce stimulating drinks are called as a beverage crops okay the crops which are used to produce stimulating drinks are called beverage crops example coffee and tea what is the scientific name of tea and which chemical compound is present in coffee and tea okay next what do you mean by horticulture next what is floriculture next how the term horticulture is derived and what its meaning next last one the golden revolution okay what is golden revolution now only i told now the excessive production of fruits vegetables flowers medicinal plants and aromatic plants is called as a golden revolution or you write like this the progress of the horticulture field okay the progress of the horticulture field is also called as a golden revolution okay you should know the terms like this uh, golden revolution uh, white revolution blue, blue revolution green revolution yellow revolution red revolution okay these are the important terms in ssc exams okay so if you want to write and comments just write the write these terms okay green revolution white revolution blue revolution yellow revolution red revolution and this uh, golden revolution okay so write the answers and send in your personal whatsapp group okay if you have any doubts means also you can ask questions in our personal whatsapp group okay huh. with this uh, we have completed uh, seven geography chapters okay with this indian land resource we have uh, completed seven chapters in geography okay in part 1 i have completed all chapters okay so you guys complete uh, complete the question and answers but in next uh, part i will continue okay here uh, some chapters are there in economics and business study and in political science
and you are not in social science. Okay, so I will complete that chapter. Next I will start part two. Okay, in political science, still two more chapters are there, and in sociology one chapter left, and in economics two chapters, and business study only one chapter. Okay, thank you guys. We will meet in next class.